Hello, Mike here. Welcome to Mac Truck Bookstop. Today I'm talking about Ivo Andrich, The Bridge on the Drina. This exceptional read was quite a challenge in deciding what country to attribute it to because Ivo Andrich was really Yugoslav and was a Yugoslav diplomat. Um, but he defined himself as a Serb, so in the end I decided to call it Serbia. Um, if there are some Bosnians out there that would like him to be attributed to Bosnia. I'm open to hearing an argument, um, but uh, that's what we're going with for now. So anyway, this uh, Ivo Andrić was a Nobel Prize winner. The book was written in the 1940s, I believe, and um, the whole book basically centers around one village, uh, Visegrad, and it's... Um, centered around a bridge that is built by originally a young boy who is kidnapped from the village to be made into a janissary for the Ottoman Empire and then he works his way up into the ranks to become a vizier and using his power he builds this um, this bridge and the the bridge which all the stories in the novel uh, revolve around and um, the bridge is the only constant character through all of the works. Um, this is really, you can almost think of this as a collection of folk tales from one village. And it's like there, there's a coziness to this book. So um, there, there, there's this sense of like sitting around a fire, uh, you know, a, 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 one of those old um, uh, stoves and uh, some coffee on the stove and um, just this roaring fire and some some rich meats and uh, you know this this whole cozy atmosphere and then one of your grandparents starts to tell you a legend uh, about this bridge in town and there's like 20 of these so it, it's sort of like that like a collection of folk tales you could also think of it as kind of a collection of short stories but the running narrative is this bridge uh, so this bridge, what what about it? I mean, it's a place where people meet. Uh, there's this central part of it called the um, ooh, K Kapia. Uh, I hope I got that right. And um, that's kind of a meeting place. It's also a place where uh, armies have set up their barracks. It's a place where um, uh, scorned lovers j have jumped off. And this whole history of the bridge is just, it's rife with legends, like there's, you know, guys that live inside the bridge, and um, there's a lot of also uh, cultural context here that I'm not sure that I got. Um, this, this book probably deserved a bit of a slower read for me, and what I mean by slower is that I should have taken the time maybe to look up some history about the region, um, which I just really didn't I, I kind of just experienced it through the story and that was fine that was fine I got through the book but there's a lot of cultural references and um, historical references like uh, from what I can gather there's there's different ethnic groups you've got the Serbs the Turks um, and uh, uh, Austrians um, there there's all these different groups that kind of come into play but I guess the main divisions here you have Christians and Muslims so one side of the bridge is like Muslims and one side is Christian and and that's this kind of like initial building of the bridge united the two religions and the east to the west of the Ottoman Empire um, so with that beginning I will say um, the as far as uh, the length you're looking at about 300 pages but in this in this particular translation or edition, it's pretty small text, so, and like I said, there's about 20 stories. Each one is like introducing new characters, and so it can be a bit slow to get through if you're actually actually absorbing it. And like I said, I could have taken it even slower just learning about the history and everything. That being said, it was still very entertaining. Some parts of it were much more entertaining to me than others, like easier to get the story where you didn't need as much cultural context. Um, my favorite parts of the book were the ones where like nothing scary or intense was happening. Of course, a plane. There's always a plane in my um, outdoor videos or whatever. But uh, so 
I, my favorite parts were like the cozier chapters and and the ones where like people are just sitting around talking in a bar or like musicians playing like little details like that that just made me feel immersed in the town and um and uh so this is both a strength and weakness of the book i'll get to that in a second i wanted to cover some of the more basics first it is as you might have already gathered um it's not the most accessible book as far as like understanding everything but it is accessible enough that certain stories if you're willing to persevere uh certain stories will grab you and certain things will grab you as you go through um I guess uh, the, I will say, for people who are squeamish, there's one, like, extremely uh, gruesome uh, execution scene in the first chapter, two or two chapters. Um, but after that, there's nothing quite so gruesome. Um, <laughs> so I guess if you can get through that, it, it was actually hard for me to read. It, it, there's kind of, it's, uh, you know, it's the cap sheet. There's a, a guy who's rebelling and trying to stop the construction of the bridge, they catch him, and, you know, this is the 15 or 1600s, so you can imagine the rest. Um, and it might be worse than you think. But, uh, so, the, you have that. I mean, there's other there's other parts. There's, a, there's like, Serbian rebellions that the Ottomans crush, so... Um, but just like the people in the village, you kind of get used to walking by the... Uh, the impaled heads on on stakes on the bridge so it's just kind of it it doesn't get worse than that as the book goes on um for the most part the book stays away from gratuitous violence or any fighting scenes um it really focuses a lot on uh talking about the characters their backstories and this is kind of what i was coming to before where this is both a strength and a weakness in the book because if there's one major weakness in the book is that it was hard for me to really connect with any character uh there were like one or two that i could kind of connect with but it's like the book would the book takes this long time to describe like this person's backstory or their appearance and what they do and what their shop is and everything and it gives you this description but but then they're gone by the next chapter and you never see them again so um this kind of like at some point i just intuitively stopped like started skimming these long descriptions of characters because i'm like well they're going to be gone in the next chapter anyway and i was more just trying to get the story so that's more like a thing of the writing and i don't know how much the translation has to do with that i did feel like there was a bit of a wall between me and the writing and me and the characters um, for the reason I just mentioned, and maybe it was something to do with the translation. Obviously, I haven't read the original language, and I wouldn't know. But that was the hardest thing for me about the book. Um, overall, though, it was positive, and there were some really interesting things um, in it. So, um, the I, I don't even think I really gave much context for this area, but um, it's basically the, the River Drina is the border from what I understand, between Serbia and Bosnia. I hope I understood that right, because otherwise then my whole premise for the book is off. And if I'm wrong, uh, somebody will correct me. But um, like I said, I really didn't do much research into the facts of this book. I was trying just to enjoy it as the stories. And maybe that I would have liked it better had I done a bit more work. But, um, you know, I'm reading multiple books at once uh, right now. I'm giving that an experiment, so um, I, I may not be giving my full attention to each uh, country that I'm reading in that sense, but uh, I digress. This, uh, the uh, themes of this book are really centered on, um, one, the impermanence of people, and the permanence of the bridge, or the seeming permanence of the bridge, highlights this. Uh, the fact that, you know, these characters come in and out, the lives rise and fall, live, uh, people are born and die, and this village goes on and it changes, but the bridge remains. So that, um, that juxtaposition of, of the, the unchanging bridge with the changing people um, is, a, is obviously something to explore thematically there. Um, also... Uh, there is kind of a there is kind of a conversation here about civilization 
and there was one part um, that I thought was was really engaging where um, there's a lot of mentions of fire and civilization is kind of described as a fire like an ember that uh, that you know people talk about the rise and fall of civilization but the metaphor here is it's not a rise and fall like like a wave it's a uh, civilization is a burning ember so that while parts of it are crumbling in ashes others are shooting up and 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 um and uh exulting in glory and um you can kind of think of this in the way like think of the greek civilization which um you know had their golden era basically in the century before its fall uh or athen specifically athenian civilization um yeah so the that's a theme in the book as well um another is is how uh, physical structures um, uh, define, unite people, and and that's tied into civilization too. And and um, this this original the the idea here is that the bridge is a is an expression of love by this vizier who was originally kidnapped from his village you know, taken into the Janissaries and then rose rose up to be a vizier, um, but never forgot his village. So this bridge was an expression of love um, for the mother he never really knew, for the for the village he never he never got to grow in. And um, it was to connect them. It was to make them grow. And they did. And they thrived. And they were that fire of civilization up until the modern era when the First World War destroyed everything in this region, um, which is about where the book ends. So the book takes you through about uh, three, four hundred years of history, if I'm not mistaken, um, from the uh, Ottoman Empire to the, um, or the beginnings of the Ottoman Empire, roughly, or their height, I don't know, 15, 1600s up through World War I, 1914. So that's, that's about the scope that this covers, which is a lot, obviously. There's a lot of there's a lot of great uh, stories in here, you know, Faustian bargain. Uh, you've got one kind of ba based on the Faustian bargain, um, a, a man makes a deal with the devil kind of thing. You've got uh, love stories, you know. You've got got a ton of stuff in here. So if you're interested in this region, like particularly interested in this region, and you want to study like some of the history and culture, that will only help you in understanding this book, and that will be that will certainly give you an advantage over me, um, because I didn't do that my homework on this one as much. Um, but I I definitely will go back to this and read parts. I don't know if I would ever read the whole book from cover to cover again, but there were certainly parts that uh, that stuck with me and um, that I will go back to, especially towards the end. There was oh, drop the book. Uh, there were some great stuff like, um, but I don't any I don't edit anything out, so that's staying in. <laughs> um, so. I wrote at the end of the book for some reason, um, a new age of rapid cycles of building and destruction, something that lasted, the people come and go. All right, I think that's pretty clear. I almost wrote a little, a little poem there. Um, then I wrote, worthwhile, yes, rereadable, yes, difficulties, hard to attach to any character, and felt like a wall with the writing and the translation at times. So. Um, but the, and, and again, back to the themes of the book, the, um, I, I think really if, as you're reading this book, you keep in mind that this bridge was an, um, expression of love from the vizier to the village, and you keep in mind what the bridge represents, not only to the village, I mean, it's not a, it's not a moral character, the bridge cannot be a moral character because it's a physical object, but it is the main character of the story. And I don't know if I've ever read a book like that. I've read books, or, or maybe seen movies where I can say, like, the city itself seems like a character, like when it's in a city, and the city has its own character, but I've never just, I've never seen just a bridge, or one building, or one structure 
be the principal character of the book. So I actually find that to be a really intriguing thing and really unique about it. If, if there are other books that you can think of that kind of fit that description, let me know because I'm really intrigued by that idea of just one structure and everything happening in and around that structure is uh, what makes up the story. Um, I, I enjoy the I enjoy books that are contained in small areas, um, but I also do think that I would have liked to get to know some of the characters more and stick with the same characters as well instead of everyone kind of just being a passerby. But I guess that was kind of the point of the book. Um, so, yeah, the sun's kind of going down, so I don't know how much longer I can uh, talk here <laughs> and. Um, though it is a beautiful day, it's like our first nice day of the year here in Wisconsin, so, um, not true, there was one, but this is the first, like, okay, it's spring now, um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to talk about, uh, so, you know, my spontaneous style for these videos, um, I like to get at least to 20 minutes if I can, I'm at 16 right now, um, also, my camera's um, standing up in, or my phone is, is up in a tree right now, so. Yeah, no, nothing else. I think I've, I think I've covered it. Uh, would I recommend it? Yeah, if it sounds interesting to you, I, I would. Um, I don't have much else to say. Thank you for uh, watching, but it, I, I'm going to um, actually show the next book. Uh, I, I do have another book that I'm planning to read here soon. So along with the other two books that I was um, talking about in the previous videos, uh, Fernando Pessoa, which I think I'm probably going to finish very soon, um, I'm going to start reading A Girl is a Body of Water by Jennifer um, Mansubaga Makumbi. And this is from Uganda. And... Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a recent book, but um, she really seems like she's in the top uh, top of Uganda's authors, and um, we got to keep moving through the African countries on this list because there's a lot of them. Um, so trying to spread spread things around by region. Um, other than that, yep, still working on Outlaws of the Marsh. And thank you all for watching, whoever's watching, uh, wherever you're watching, and please consider subscribing or commenting. Uh, thank you. Have a great night.